Good day students, welcome to mathgotserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over how to differentiate implicitly. This standard is covered in AP Calculus A, B, B, C, Calculus 1 to 3 and Differential Equations. There are two practice problems at the end of this presentation that we'd like you to try out to um, demonstrate your mastery of the skills that we're covering in this um, example. If you like access to our entire playlist for implicit differentiation, if you like access to the course list for calculus and other valuable resources, just take a look at the links in the description below or visit our website at mathgotserved.com. If this sounds like what you're looking for, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. All right, the um, example that we're looking at is as follows. So um, if cosine of x plus y, the quantity x plus y is equal to 3y minus 2x, then what is dy dx? dy dx is what? All right, so let's go ahead and um, find the derivative dy dx. Um, of y with respect to x given this equation cosine quantity x plus y equals 3y minus 2x. Alright so we're gonna start off by differentiating the left and the right side so we're looking for d the derivative with respect to x of cosine x plus y equals the derivative with respect to x of 3y minus 2x. Okay, so notice we're differentiating with respect to x. Okay, so what does that mean? If you're differentiating any variable other than x, there is going to be a disagreement. Any variable other than x or any function that has an independent variable um, other than x. Whenever you have a disagreement, you have to add d of that variable with respect to x. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and differentiate both sides and then you see exactly what I'm talking about. On the left side, we have a composite function. Okay, so we have to apply the chain rule in differentiating the left side, and then we have an x and a y here, then we have to use implicit differentiation um, there. Okay, all right, so let's um, apply the chain rule. I'm going to call the outer function, let's call the outer function f. Okay, and then the inner function, let's call that g, and we're going to apply the chain rule um, here. Okay, so let's decompose them to make it easy to apply. So f of x is going to be cosine x, and then the inner function um, g of x is going to be um, g of x, actually it's g of x, y uh, is going to be, let me correct that. So we have two independent variables here. So g as a function of x, y is going to be um, x plus y. Okay? All right, if you have the chain rule mastered, it's easy for you to differentiate this function, but I'm going over the steps just to make sure that um, everyone understands exactly what I'm doing, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and review the formula for chain rule differentiation real quick and then we're going to apply it here, okay? If you have the derivative of a composite function, g, f of g of x, if you differentiate implicitly, so prime is going to be the derivative of the outer f prime evaluated at the inner times the derivative of the inner function. Okay, if you apply that here, if you have, you differentiate the outer function, you have negative sine x evaluated at the inner, so you have negative sine x of x plus y times the derivative of the inner, which would simply be 1 plus y prime. All right, so negative sine x um, of x plus y times 1 plus y prime or dy dx. So that's how that will work if you want to do it mentally. But let me show you the steps so that I, um, we don't lose anyone here. So let's differentiate the left side. So if I differentiate um, f of x, f prime of x is going to be the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. So this is the derivative of the outer f prime, okay? And then um, we're going to go ahead and differentiate the inner function. When we're differentiating the inner function, we want to be careful here because it's a function of x and y, so we got to use implicit differentiation here. The derivative of x is just 1, 
you have one dx dx so you notice if you have the x dx it cancels out right that's what happens when you have agreement you don't have d of that variable with respect to that variable because you're the same but in the case of y if you differentiate y you're gonna have the derivative of y using the constant rule but since you have disagreement this variable y doesn't match with what you're differentiating with respect to you have to add d of that variable to y dx it's like the chain rule being applied here okay so it's 1 plus 1 times 2y dx if you simplify that it's going to become uh, dy dx okay all right so there goes the derivative of the inner function now applying the chain rule you're going to um, evaluate the derivative of the outer evaluated at the inner so we'll take the inner function and plug it into the outer function okay so that will be this piece right here and then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of the inner function this implicitly defined fun differentiated function here that will be what we'll multiply by and it will represent g prime of xy in this case okay so let's put it all together the derivative of the left side you notice we use chain rule and implicit differentiation together it's going to be negative sine of x plus y the derivative of the outer evaluated at the inner times the derivative of the inner since we have two terms here we want to use parenthesis 1 plus dy dx you can use y prime it doesn't matter all right on the on the right side let's go ahead and differentiate that if you differentiate 3y you have 3 but notice that we have a disagreement here these variables are different so what must we add on to um, reflect the disagreement we have to multiply by dy dx okay minus derivative of 2x is just 2 dx dx cancels out so we have agreement there all right so let us know how what you think about this chain rule differentiation process was it clear was it easy for you to understand just uh, put your um, responses in the comment section below so that well, we can respond to that all right moving along we want to get dy dx um, on one side of the equation so we have to distribute completely first on the left side and then we'll, we're going to collect like terms on one side and then the terms with the dy dx on one side and then the terms that do not have dy dx will place on the other side alrighty so what are we going to do here negative sine of x plus y as a whole will be distributed to 1 and it will also be distributed to dy dx that will result in negative sine quantity x plus y minus um, sine quantity x plus y dy dx okay and that will equal 3 dy dx minus 2 all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to collect all the dy dx terms to one side of the equation and everything else on the other side all righty so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move um, let's see let me move 3 dy dx to the left and negative sine x plus y uh, over to the right side you can do this mentally but let me show you exactly what I'm about to do so so I'm going to subtract 3 dy dx from both sides of the equation it's just like algebra what we're doing right now and then I'm going to um, proceed to add negative 3 sine oh boy. and then I'll add negative 3 sine x or oh, negative sine x plus y to both sides okay so I'm gonna add negative uh, add sine x plus y to both sides of the equation So add sine x plus y. All right, I know most of you can do this mentally, but I'm just trying to show you what the steps are. So when you carry out the um, solving process, what you end up with is, let me put it on the right side here, you're going to end up with, um, on the left side, 
these two are gone on the right side these two are gone so you have negative sine quantity x plus y dy dx minus 3 dy dx equals negative 2 plus sine of x plus y. Okay, so what we've accomplished now is we have moved all the terms with the dy dx component to the left side of the equation and everything else is on the right side. So what are we going to do now? Well, the reason why we did this is, is that it enables us to factor out all the dy dx's okay, when they're on the same side. So now we can factor out the dy dx, so we can factor out these two. If we factor out the dy dx, we have dy dx times uh, negative sine quantity x plus y and you're left with uh, minus 3, like that. All right, equals negative 2 plus sine of x plus y. So now that we factored out um, dy dx, we can now proceed to isolate dy dx. All right, this can easily be accomplished by dividing both sides by what dy dx is being multiplied by. So we divide both sides of the equation by, um, let's see, we'll divide both sides by negative sine x plus y minus 3, and on the right side negative sine x plus y minus 3. And that will give us our final answer. Upon um, reduction, we're going to have dy dx, which is what we're looking for. The y dx is equal to negative 2 plus sine of the quantity x plus y divided by um, divided by what? Divided by uh, negative sine of x plus y minus 3. Now there are two other ways that this can be written. Another way that this can be written is uh, in a format where we factor out the negative from the denominator. So you can write your answer like this, or you can factor out the negative from the denominator. If you do that, you're going to have the form. So negative factored out from the denominator, negative 2 plus sine of x plus y divided by, I'll put another division bar here, divided by, um, So if you factor out the minuses from the denominator, you'll be left with sine of x plus y plus 3. Notice that the signs change. So you could write it like this, or you can write it like this. There's also another way you can write it. Now what if you that minus that we factored out, what if we proceeded to distribute that minus to the numerator? You can also write it as 2. You distribute this minus right here to the numerator. 2 minus sine of x plus y divided by sine of x plus y plus 3. Okay, so when you're um, working on implicit differentiation, in, in most cases when you have minuses, um, there are multiple ways that you can write down the answer depending on where you want to position the negative sign if it's factorable. As you can see here in the first answer we got, the, um, the minus was distributed to the denominator and then in this format it was factored out from the denominator and then in this last format it was distributed to the numerator. So any of these uh, formats is, is correct. All right. So that's how you differentiate implicitly. Now it's time for you to demonstrate your mastery of the procedure that we just covered. All right, so let's um, try these problems, try these. Alright, so the task is to find dy dx in the following equation. So number one, let's say you have sine of the quantity x minus y equals 5x plus 3y. Number two, let's say you have cosine of the quantity y minus 2x equals 3x minus 5y plus 2. 
So what we'd like you to do, go ahead and pause this video presentation, try out these problems, and when you're done, click back on the play button so you can see what the correct answers are. Alrighty, hopefully you had a chance to try out these problems. Um, the correct answers are as follows. For question number one, the answer dy dx is equal to negative 5 plus cosine x minus y divided by um, 3 plus cosine x minus y. All right. And then for number 2, do I dx is equal to 3 minus 2 sine y minus 2x divided by negative sine y minus 2x plus 5. Of course, there are different ways you can write this, depending on where you position the parentheses, but uh, if you distribute it either to the top or bottom, you should arrive at something like this, all right? So this is basically how um, you differentiate using implicit differentiation. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your studies of implicit differentiation, do give us a like. We greatly appreciate your positive feedback. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other presentations such as this. We upload videos to our site on a weekly basis. If you have any questions, comments, or special requests, just post it in the comments section below and we will be more than glad to respond. As indicated earlier, to gain access to the entire playlist, you can check out the link in the description or visit our website at mathcoserve.com for tons of support resources on calculus. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.